Welcome to the Vile Files. I am your host, Nick, joined by Chrissy. Chrissy, how are you doing? Happy New Year, Nicholas. Happy New Year to you. Our second episode of 2021. And I got to tell you, we got some fun. We got a fun year lined up for you. A whole year already planned out. Oh, year's already planned? Just Good kidding. To know. Um, Go it's going to be, uh, thanks for sticking with us last year. Uh, welcome to 2021. No, I, I think we're going to do some fun and exciting things. The team is growing. Uh, we have two new uh, people part of the Vile Files team. Uh, we're we're going to call them our, I think they call themselves the social syndicate. Uh, I mean. They're they're helping taking o- over uh, and running the social channels for the Vile Files. I'm sure you'll get to know these uh, wonderful women um, as, uh, as the year rolls out. Uh, but uh, we're going to be doing it. some fun, uh, interactive things on our social channels. If you're not following the Vile Files on Instagram, Go ahead and give us a follow. Uh, We'll be doing some cool things on there. One thing we're going to be starting to do, at least for batch recaps, is uh, we talk, obviously, we break down all the women on on all these recaps, but we're going to be giving our top 10. It's like a power rankings. If you're a sports fan, it's like that. You know, our power rankings of all the women from each week, which uh, sometimes will uh, include uh, like how far they might go. It might just be, for example, like Victoria. You know, we don't necessarily think she's going to go far, but uh, spoiler alert, she's in our top 10 uh, of this week for her antics on episode one. Uh, So be sure to check that out, uh, as well as some uh, fun interactive things with our Ask Nick episodes. And for that, if you've never listened to one of our Ask Nick episodes, uh, episodes that we drop every Monday where we give dating and relationship advice and we have callers come in and share their stories and, and we... Uh, offer some advice and and try to figure it all out together. Uh, stick around at the end of this episode. We will be showing or airing or dropping a preview uh, of one of our recent Ask Nick callers. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, and if there's nothing else, um, thanks for listening. Oh, by the way, we have an amazing guest, Nikki Glazer. There's so much to unpack in the new year. I feel like it's so yeah. much going on. So much going on. Nikki Glazer. Checklist. Obviously, obviously, you guys probably know she was uh, on the title of this episode. Nikki's back. Uh, one of our MVP guesses. Uh, guests. Guesses. One of our MVP guests. She's a. Uh, well, she saw Justin coming on all the time, so she insisted. No, I'm kidding. I asked her to come on uh, and be our guest. So Nikki helps us break down episode one. Can't thank her enough. Anything we're missing, Chrissy? No, I think you covered it. A lot of breath. Um, <laughs> well, what a great episode. Uh, Ali Webb uh, joins us on Wednesday for our uh, Wednesday's episode. Ali Webb, for those of you who don't know, is a uh, very successful and wonderful businesswoman. She uh, founder of Dry Bar, also a shark from time to time, a guest shark on Shark Tank. Uh, and we talk a lot about uh, women in the workforce, second chances, dating, divorce, uh, having a relationship with, working with someone you're married to. Yeah. Working with someone you're married to. Actually, a lot of fun. A lot of fun episode. Also, uh, she is one of Ben's clients, Ben from uh, Tasha's season. So uh, I think that's it. Should we get to Nikki? Let's do it. Go ahead. Give us a follow. Please. Nikki, welcome back. Thanks, Nick. So nice I'm to so have you. How many, to be here. how many times have you been a guest on on my show? I think uh, you were you were my number one most recurring guest. Then Justin Long in the month of December did a mat like he went three times all in, <laughs> wow. in one month, and and kind of did the clean sweep. But I think I think this this might be your fourth or or the, do, wait I don't know. Either way, I think you are number one. So welcome back for being Thank the MVP. You. Uh, of this I, show and I know I uh, love it and um yeah I'm just uh I'm I'm a huge fan of being friends with you and uh we keep in touch and it's it's a nice way to <laughs> whenever I like to, of I am because whenever I just text him about like something random um then we get to talking and then he's like hey want to do the podcast and it, it's like I love these relationships that turn into bookings I don't even have any intent when I text him um a lot of times for sure but uh, it's it's just so nice. And then we get to hang out on here. And this has been really most of our friendship is talking on podcasts. And that's a solid friendship. That is. But 
you know, not to to take anything away from our friendship. <laughs> if you lived in LA, we'd probably we we would have probably a more profound friendship other than just, you know, being guests on each other, each other's shows. Yes, but this is like how people are staying in touch with their friends long distance. Like it's it's hard to keep up otherwise. So this is just it kills two birds. We we get to hang out and we get to actually make some content. So you reach out and talk to a friend or keep in touch and you can kind of sum up an entire month in like maybe three or four texts, you know, for, yes. right. Uh, my life's not that interesting, <laughs> but I reached out to you when it was, or I think it was the finale last season. And I, so like last week, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, no. oh, it seems like a lifetime ago, La- but I was wondering if you thought that Zach was, um, like full of it because generally when I tend to like someone and trust them, you're like, no, I think he's shady. <laughs> and then you're right. So I was like, I like this guy. So I bet he's shady. And I had to check in with you. And I, I it, just for everyone listening, I, I haven't met Zach. I, I, I hope to in the future, but I've, I've heard nothing but very good things about him. So yeah, he seems great. And I, I was like not rooting for them because I was jealous and I wanted him for me. Really? Like it, it, were you gonna? Ridiculous. Were you going to slide if he was uh, the runner-up in his no, deal? No, because the amount of slides he would get if he was if he didn't win, like from girl, I wouldn't have stand. I wouldn't have stood a chance. I mean, I slid in. What are you talking about? Uh, another guy's um, from that season's uh, DMs, and we started talking, but nothing even came of that, and he was eliminated very early on. So um, I would, had no competition with, with in, in those DMs, I don't we, think. Are we able to share who? Or? Yeah, who was that? Yeah, I don't want to say who, okay. but... So Joe, wasn't it? It was Joe. <laughs> Joe? Who's Joe? <laughs> I honestly kind of forget his... No, I don't. I remember his name. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I just... The fact that I trusted Zach and was like, he's just so... I don't know. I but I'm glad that you think you thought think he's a good guy and you've heard only good things. I've heard I've last. only heard I've only heard good things. I don't I don't know him personally. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're gonna last? Yeah, I do. Great. I think they're gonna start pumping out kids pretty soon. She's gotta get to it. She you know, she wants five. That is yeah, she did say she wants five. Yeah. But we have to see if he wants any. He like I, didn't want any and then he was like it was, un- ah. it was unclear. He's like, What do I gotta say? You know, <laughs> what do what do you want me to say? Five's a lot, though, for someone. Not to Nick. Nick is kids. like five is half. That's all. Awesome. That's my mom. Why do you lump me in yeah. with my mom? I can barely. I have. Like I grew up with ten. Five sounds great. I have Cindy at <laughs> my assistant. Cindy was basically. I'm a child, and she just takes you, care of me. You have yeah. ten kids in your family. What? How? How are we? How did we just talk about our? This? How did we talk about our friendship? And, and and then my what? family is like prominently displayed on national television like three different I mean, times. I watched your seasons. I don't know. You have ten kids. I have ten they siblings. Have I don't siblings. have any kids, Nick. I know, but like yeah. in your family, can you say all their names really, really fast yeah. in order? Really? You want me to do it? Yeah, it's it's always fun to hear. I, my, my mom comes from a family of ten kids, and it's like hilarious to hear. Her really? Fast. So go. Jessica, yeah. Maria, Sarah, Sam, Jacob, Luke, James, Teresa, Olivia, Bella. That seemed like seven. I think you missed one or two. I don't think so. I wasn't counting, but oh yeah, you missed yourself. Maybe I did skip. I did skip me. I I named all my siblings. Oh my god, that's a whole other podcast. I got. I I gotta know more. Um, but anyway, we can we can get to this next season. I guess. I guess. Yeah. So Matt James. We have to. I want to hear more about your your birth order. (laughs) My my therapist was very excited about the birth order. Oh yeah. Apparently, what number are you? Two. Okay. But I'm the first mm-hmm. boy. Oh, yeah. That means a lot. And mom's and, favorite. And then they just kept on coming. <laughs> like a clown car. We You're made like, one so Mom. perfect. We have to make more. <laughs> yeah. That's what I tell myself. Yeah. Um, so, Matt. Matt is our bachelor. Are we, uh, you're, you're excited. You, uh, what do you think? He's devilishly handsome. He's arguably one of the best looking bachelors we've had. He's so hot, for sure. I didn't know anything about him. I remember when he was announced. Where did they find him? Do we know his origin story? Did someone yeah, submit he's, him? He's Tyler Cameron's best friend. And oh, Nikki, if you if you, for those of you listening, Nikki rolled her eyes. What, what's why? I mean, why did you roll your eyes? Why aren't they 
leading with that this guy is friends with the the hot guy from well, that I, I, Hannah because season. everyone kind of knows that yeah. already except for you, Nikki. Uh, yeah. Well, I just learned that <laughs> Nick has nine brothers and sisters. I'm late to the, a lot of these. Well, things. and and fairness to Nikki, I mean, I mean, maybe the, everyone who listens to a podcast knows this, but not everyone does know that about i missed the announcement so i'm sure it was part of the announcement on (laughs) when they they did it on the show but um i i would i would like to see i would have liked to see tyler again last night maybe giving his friend some advice i'm sure they'll shirtless i'm sure they'll bring back tyler right but it made sense because like you know let's we'll actually get in the episode here but early on obviously we get to know matt a little bit we got to meet his mother for the first time and that is interesting because to your point we're we're very used to knowing who the bachelor bachelorette year, year is like this right. is the first time in i don't know 20 30 seasons that they ha- casted someone who's never been on their show before so we've never met matt's mom right we don't know anything mm-hmm. about his story so they ha- that's that's probably why this episode or this premiere spent more time on that than you have seen in other seasons that's why we had to sit down with chris he's like hey can i like can you explain to me what the fuck this show is <laughs> conversation with chris right um, as if he hadn't had that conversation before, but as if that wasn't sure. A but you, with- you know, you have to have that <laughs> yes. for the audience to see, right? Um, yes. And this kind of show that Matt's new to this process, right? And that that is interesting because we take for granted that the person who is the lead on these seasons has experience. Like you know, the the for everyone who finishes top four on the show they go through a very different experience filming, right? That's when usually it's they, you know, you have, a, there's a lot less competing. So you have, you start doing more like uh, B-roll, right? You start searching into the moonlight and watching sunsets and looking at oceans and you do these walks and you spend all these days filming, right? Just the, shirtless walks. The shirtless, shirtless walks, the shower balcony, scenes. When you're top four, you, you spend like two or three days yeah. doing that. And then usually one of those people, right, it ends up being your bachelor bachelorette. Mm-hmm. Not always, like Hannah Brown wasn't. Uh, but like you have some experience. This is all new to Matt, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like it's going to be a, an interesting process throughout the season. And though I'm sure we'll see moments where it might even be a different reaction because he's so new. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good, I think it's a good mix up. I like someone who's just as nervous as the people showing up. I thought it was, you, you make a good point. It was an interesting, it was cool to see a guy that was like nervous. And, and as uh, we heard many times during the show, vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and to answer your question, why didn't we see Tyler there yet? Because Tyler has never been the bachelor, right? So Tyler can't mm-hmm. sit, you know, in the past, they used to like bring back old bachelors be like, what's it like to be the bachelor? And like, so Tyler hasn't been the bachelor. So that would be kind of a weird conversation to have about that process. Chris Harrison. And then you have COVID, right? There's all these other logistical things That's with this true. season of like, why don't we just talk to Chris? Chris certainly knows, right? The process. So, so we got that sit down. But Chris's general advice to Matt of this working out is, well, if you're, you know, honest and genuine or basically a good guy, you'll find love. And I'm just like, whoa, what? A, what? If if you're an honest and genuine person, then then it'll work out for you. And if what happens if it doesn't work out for you? Does that mean Matt's a, a liar and, and a, a oh, terrible right. person? It's such a such a pressure they put on. It's like it's so I always hate that about the show, and, which is why. A handful of people were, who didn't end up in relationship were kind of vilified by Bachelor Nation because the implication is if you can't find love in this show, then you weren't honest or vulnerable. Whoa. <laughs> Did you feel I that way hate that shit. going through it? This is different because Chris doesn't usually have those sit downs and didn't with me. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think every lead feels this immense pressure of it working out and not working out. But of 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 being honest too, do you think that's really what what it takes? No. To f- do- well, I think you want to be honest in relationships, but just being honest. But that's like saying you're going to go out to Friday night and you're with your friends and you're one friend. And, you know, you're in a friend group with four, four dudes. Right. And, and three of you have girlfriends and your one buddy's like, ah, man, I want, I'd love to have a girlfriend like like you guys. And then you're like, well, it's a guy's night. We're going out to the bars. And you say to your friend, well, if you're just honest and genuine tonight you'll find love <laughs> and you walk into a bar and there's like 30 chicks right and you're just like ah i don't know it's not my wife my wife wasn't here tonight and i'm just like well maybe you weren't honest and genuine you yes. know like that's 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 a more realistic application of what chris said to matt in that context but i don't know well we we talk so much about how important it is to know what you're putting in your body 
like dirty dicks. Uh, and uh, we've spent a lot of time reminding all you women out there about how great Ritual is for the vitamins they make. But all the men out there, get excited because Ritual has vitamins for you now. That's right. And dirty vaginas are out there, too. <laughs> It's, dirty vaginas and dirty dicks, they're, they're just catching you everywhere. They're everywhere. You know, I, I feel like Ritual finally got on the man train because of me, because I, I've I've been, we've been obviously big fans of Ritual since the beginning of Vile Files. And they, they heard me. They heard that I wanted a, a vitamin meant just for me, for the man that I am and the needs that my body has. And they did yeah. that. Ritual's designed with different life stages in mind. Now available for women, men, and teens, Ritual multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping always so you can start so you can start snooze or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual in your first month, they'll refund your first order. Ritual is formulated with key nutrients including vitamin D3 to help fill in the gaps in your diet with their fresh tasting delayed release capsules are also designed to dissolve later in less sensitive areas of your stomach, so you can take them with or without food. And they also have a minty taste, so they don't taste like fish. You deserve to know what's in your multivitamin and what's in your body, so that's why Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash V-I-A-L-L to start your ritual today. There are a few things more important than your gut health. That is a true statement, and huzzah! is making it easy for you people with their probiotic seltzer. It now comes in strawberry and hibiscus flavors. Well, it's strawberry and hibiscus is one flavor. Then you have juicy pear is another. Also, they have a, a lemon one that I haven't had the pleasure of tasting. The raspberry yet. lemon. The raspberry so lemon. I, I can't wait to, to tr get my hands on that. And neither can my gut. Huzzah contains added probiotics to support healthy digestion. Each flavor is non-perishable and can be stored at room temperature, but is delicious and refreshing when served cold. So celebrate those rare chairs to live out loud moments with Huzzah, a bold new probiotic seltzer with benefits. Stock up on Huzzah probiotic seltzer by using code VIALL for 20% off your order to drinkhuzzah.com. That's code VIALL for 20% off at H-U-Z-Z-A-H.com. It's interesting because being honest and just uh, authentic means you're not playing any games. And I still think that games work. And I think that a lot of these girls we're going to get to could benefit from being a, playing it a little closer to the vest and not being so honest and oh, so vulnerable. There's probably some truth. Uh, you can probably, yeah. For some of like them. If, okay, if you're the, you're the bachelor, remember back, okay, when a girl gets out, I'm think, I'm guessing the ones you ended up with did not come out and go, oh my God, you're like the hottest guy I've ever seen. Oh my seen. God, so many I of them said that. I would do anything for you. I'm seriously, <sighs> I'm only here for you. I, I hope at the end of this, we end up together forever. And no, uh, my heart is face. your home. I mean, that is just like boner kryptonite. It's just, it's Mine guys was, do not want to hear that right away. They, they don't. I mean, it's it, it, funny. The one girl who said I would, did she literally said I would do anything for you? Did she not? Ooh. Yeah. Which it, yeah. that is a huge turnoff in general. I know for me, but I think for most guys, I don't want to speak for, for everyone. And that is a weird thing. Mine was literally the opposite. I mean, cause I, mine, the whole thing was I was maybe the villain and then I was a hero on paradise. So like, you know, Taylor, Taylor was like, my friends think you're assholes. I was like, well, nice to meet you. You know, yeah, was, that's not good either. No, it was like the, I was like, okay, well, you know, just, be, you know what the best thing to do? Be quiet. <laughs> like just get out look hot keep your mouth shut i hate to say it girls but uh, i'm 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 oh come on at least say at least some of them were like like i like the being ones a are, little bit more mysterious the, no, i like the ones where like the the playful ones right the whether it's the bigfoot feet or the uh what's her name oh, was the it goat, a, feet. Go, yeah, yeah. The goat feet goat feet yeah the greatest of all time uh right. was it uh t -t -t alana <laughs> with the, the the lady in the tramp spaghetti kiss that was cool yeah i thought that was cute too he pulled away pretty quickly from that kiss. oh that's because he's i did watch it a that, lot that's because he's very nervous and he he's aware that probably everyone's watching him and he's just okay yeah that's a good point um, and he was like, carbs, I can't, my, my, my figure. <laughs> um, 
The Bachelor no. Survival Kit one was good. Yeah. I love oh, that yeah. one. I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm totally fine with all of those things. They're all playful. They're all but silly. Me. But like when you sure. have nothing and you've come up with nothing, like you've talk to all these producers are like what do you want to do you're like i'm just gonna be myself and then you come out and you say you're the hottest person i've ever seen that's probably not the way to go yeah uh, just, but stay cute and stay like just like uh, just don't don't be the queen did one girl refer to him as a god at some point in the episode i'm sure i mean these girls were gaga yeah. it was they I think this quarantine beforehand really horned these ladies up. They were pulling up in those screaming, the limos just screaming. Um, they were, yeah, they they were definitely. That um, is that is true. Hornier I mean, than any girls I've seen before. Yeah, think about it, right? Like this is a, it's we're seeing all these women after a year of quarantine, mm -hmm. six months. I mean, whatever they, <laughs> depending on what they've been doing, and certainly the past couple of months they haven't been doing anything. Right. I'm assuming they were super locked down when they were going through the casting process because they were probably told, hey, listen, if you catch it, you're not coming on. You can't go. Oh, my God. Uh, so then, the, yeah, they're they're all ready to go. And yeah. every single girl who has gone through this quarantine single is like, I need to find a husband like the the need for a partner, knowing that we can all be on lockdown um, is just. I heard Chris Rock today say that all of his single friends are more miserable than his friends that are in bad marriages. Cause they're like, I, you know, I hate her, but at least she's around. I'm not alone. Like being these girls, there's more desperation to find the person that you can hunker down with more than ever right now. I think you think so. Yeah. And I think that's why Matt is actually open to it because I think, and this is a trend that's been happening with a lot of my girlfriends who have started dating in New York and back when things were not as bad as they are now. Um, they were finding that guys were very into commitments more than ever before. Like, <laughs> like they were almost like repulsed by it. Like this guy is so into me and wants to like, you know, move things along much quicker than any uh, other time. He's planning because... second dates on the first date. He's communicating <laughs> yeah. with me. Yeah. He's very open. He responds to my texts at an appropriate time. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's so, yes, it, it was. It, it was uh, the same as the girl getting out of the car and, say, and saying too much. It's like we we just want people to like us, but not too much. I mean, selfishly, I'm happy to hear this because without this type of mindset, I wouldn't have my Ask Nick episodes and, and you know, my, my podcast probably wouldn't be what it yeah. is. Yeah. We learn about Matt and then we kind of get right to the, the women of the season. So I, I think obviously we're just going to spend a lot of time breaking down uh, these women from uh, uh, episode one. Um, first one out of the limo was Bree. Bree, yeah. Uh, I'm he, calling her as the winner. Huge fan of Bree. Huge fan. I I didn't um like you know coming out. Obviously, the fact that she was the first person on the limo is significant, right? Um, we don't know if she actually was the first person on the limo, right. but the fact that they aired her first is significant. Usually, that's a pretty good sign that. She's going to be around and she doesn't come across as someone who's there for like drama per se. Like, you know, I'm not saying she's not going to get in drama, but, you know, she's do she doesn't. Um, she's got poise and she's got and what she does have for me when she sat down with Matt. That's when I was like for something about her when she talked to Matt, like she just kind of jumps off the page when she talks and she's not like trying to be big. You know, she yes. just I was just like, wow, like I was very yeah. captivated by her. Oh, yeah. Because she's Persian and black and they had that whole conversation. Hard. Yeah, that's the way yeah. she talked and she commit like she was she had a great eye contact with with Matt and she just was very she held his attention Calm. and just I, I lot that doesn't really happen for me as a viewer that I was like right when she started talking to Matt, I was I was paying attention. You were her. calling up Chris Harrison saying, hey, I'll. I'm ready to go again. I, I, uh, I'll be shocked if she's not top four. Uh, yeah, I, I, as soon as she got out and I saw him look at her, I was like, she's, that's who I'm picking as the winner right now. Um, because, because of exactly what I was saying before, I think if you ever go on, if someone's listening to this, that's planning on going on the show, just do exactly what she did when she got out of the car. It was understated. It was confident. It was calm because he's so nervous. Yeah. The fact that she was like a, you know, it's the emotional support animal in terms of calmness and just good eye contact, but didn't give too much. Didn't she asked didn't him his name? It. 
She was like, what's your name? Oh, now that. Oh, is she did. Oh, God. That I, was Brie. No. Brie was the one who was like, I didn't what's even, your name? I didn't even pick up on that. And that's such a that is power so move. Good. That's such so a, good. He was like, what's your name? And she was like, what's your name? <laughs> yeah, that's much better than saying you're like God. <laughs> oh my god that's like i didn't even uh, i mean i had a couple name. like you know it like i had a you know for all the comments i got from like taylor or the criticism there you know it's always there's always a couple girls who are like oh my god i feel like i'm meeting a celebrity or someone on tv and you're right it's just kind of like a weird thing especially in those contexts right you're like you're there like i want to meet someone i want to like you know get to know and and have feelings for and a girl asking your name and kind of getting on your level immediately is such a power move. So great. masterful. I would watch, I would watch a masterclass of how to get out of a limo on the bachelor from Brie. Um, from Brie. It, I mean, it was really, <laughs> really good. And then was, was uh, Abigail the second one out of the limo? No, Rachel was the second one out of the limo. Rachel was the second one. I mean, and Rachel she was like the, I'm in trouble. Oh my God. I'm in trouble. What'd I you think of Rachel? Nikki? You. She was, the, um, Oh, she's going to be a final, final one as well. I could see, yeah, I could see her being final four as well. I thought she was going to have some joke about being from coming Georgia. I mean, well, but then she cried when Matt prayed and, um, I mean, but I love, <laughs> but she wouldn't say if she was religious or not. She was just like, her response is kind of like, I just... mean, I don't know, not really, but Hey, what are, are, are like, I don't know what it was. Like something he said touched her. I don't know what it was. I think that was a, a move. Um, you know, I just think it was, I don't know. What do you think of the prank? Oh God. Um, I think we, sh there should be a separation of church and date. I don't really want prayer times at my, on my bachelor. I was just like, why does everything have to be Christian? I have nothing, no problem with Christians, but it seems like ABC to me is making a, a move here to include that part. I mean, it's sweet. I, I pray I don't, too. I think that was all Matt. I uh, when Rob Mills was yeah. here um, last season, and he'll mm -hmm. be he'll be back on this season. But he said, and this was like right after when they recorded Matt's night one, and he said Matt did something no other bachelor has done. I haven't asked Rob if that's it. I assume that's what it is. Because I, mm -hmm. I no, I I don't think the producer said to Matt like you should pray. I'm. I, I 100 percent believe that that was all Matt. He just decided to do that. Right. He might have given the producers a heads up. Hey, man, like, would it be cool? What do you think if I like said I'm a prayer? I'm saying they're they they them leaving that in was well. That his, was a speech. Was, I mean, how do you not? How do you take that out? You can take it out. No, not that they should have. I'm just it. saying it. You loved it. I. I, I would have been as awkward as I always am during like a prayer like that. I would have been looking up being like, is anyone else like looking right? Like, I don't know what to do. Do I say amen? Do I do the the thing <laughs> at the end? Like, I mean, I don't I stand a chance here. <laughs> I don't think I, I would just go, you know what? I'm going to go because you're not going to like me. Um, if this is what we have to do before meals and things, I it's, it's a little exhausting. Well, I mean, <laughs> and it's... I, and I, I'm someone who's like spiritual, but I just, that's too much. No, I, I listen, I get what you're saying. Like, I think it's great that Matt did that. Obviously it's going to play very well with a big chunk of bat nation in his audience. And it, it certainly yeah. played well with a lot of the women, you know, it's a, it's, it's a safe bet that a lot of the women that are, they're casting in that show are very strong Christians and are, are very much going to like that sort of thing. I'm with you that for me, as much as I grew up very religious and still pray and still am a religious person, I I would I would I would immediately start thinking, wait, oh, okay, this is this is a big deal for you and we're okay. And I don't I don't know I wouldn't I personally wouldn't immediately be like goo goo gaga gushing over it. I, I don't right. I don't know if it would be a bad thing for me, but I it would, would be the same it thing. It would catch me off guard. If he were to be like, I want five kids, I'd be like, I'm gonna like go. Um Cool. Like it's the same kind of like it's a de it's not a deal breaker, but I can't be praying before meals and like before like we go on a road trip or something. It's like too much time <laughs> wasted. Like it's just a lot. So let me ask you this: What I if can't. what if you got to meet Matt and mm -hmm. you're dating him, right? And yeah. he never prayed like that ever again. Would that bother you, or would you be like, "What was up with that speech?" Yeah. I mean, yeah, it would bother me because it, it, it to me would be, be like, you want to pray and now you feel like you can't because I don't want to like, let's figure out a way to make this work for us. I would probably put up with it. I mean, 
honestly, I would just pretend like I'm cool with it <laughs> to stay there. And you know what? I would have, I, I, I wished I were deaf during that um, part of the show. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm jealous of her that she doesn't have to hear this shit. <laughs> That's probably. <laughs> if she... <laughs> All our Christian listeners just. Uh... No, I, everyone who is a Christian, I it's I am, I don't have anything against what you believe in, but it was just like I, let's just get to the the crying and the. Yeah. The kissing. Listen, I I get what I you're saying. A, I had a I different mean, reaction. Say what, so it worked for you, Chrissy. It yeah, worked Chrissy, for me hundred percent. Chrissy, if you Chrissy, if you went on a date, yeah, you're at dinner, or drinks, drinks. It's just drinks. And but sitting, I regularly will pray at dinner, so to me, I like I did that. He, okay. So I on a so on our first date, guy grabs your hand and says, "Can we just pray together?" You're you're into it. Like done it and i do it okay. so yeah well so there you go it's just uh so i think it. i can be talked into it i'm listen i'm what's the worst thing it. what's the worst thing that a person could sit in front of you and be like let's just talk about how awesome <laughs> like our day was and just thank god for it no like, it is it's, it's way sweet. better than him just being like so bitch you want to do it <laughs> like, well I if just, those are our two alternatives then yes <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> I prefer I... somewhere in the me middle of like, <laughs> tell me about yourself. <laughs> it's rough out there, Nick. There's no in the middle anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like, well, I know we like to paint broad brushes in our society today, but. Um, yeah, that's why I would have some follow-up questions. Well, follow-up questions are great. That's, that's The Bachelor. It's dating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is dating, yeah. <laughs> speaking of hearing impaired, what do you think of, of Abigail? Oh, final, final three as well. Final. Success. Yeah, she's. Love. She's amazing. Um, and all the, all the other girls love her, too, because they're like, yeah, we can talk about this bitch behind her back. <laughs> but it has right, to be right it has to room. it has to be literally behind her back, though. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. Because she can read lips like a champ. My dad, I was watching it with my dad. He goes, how does she do that? I'm like, because that's a thing, dad. But she he has she, never even heard of it. She mentioned that she has a hearing aid. Yeah, with she the has hearing that. aid, she can hear. But you take the hearing aid out. She can't. Yeah. OK. We had an ask Nick caller like that had the same hearing aid that she did it was interesting i want her for sure to get hometowns because when she was talking to matt about her relationship with her sister and now and her sister being also uh deaf and yeah. and i i just i was so captivated by that relationship like it seemed like she basically told this like beautiful mini movie story and i just like her big sister going through this and her little i just want to like all i want to do is listen to her and her sister talk i want the entire hometown episode to be 45 minutes of those two talking and just i, I just want to sit i think then listen i it's, yeah you Nikki keep has. saying listen and it's kind of rubbing it in but um what i, what I do want to say is like she no, that talk. girl, she's amazing and that's that's the beauty of people with disabilities i think is that they're, she's perfectly cut out for the show, especially in, in a, a season where they're f focusing so much on vulnerability and being honest. Because when you have a disability like that, she's said, like, I have to, she learned from her older sister to just be like, hi, I'm deaf. And it kind of makes people feel awkward. But when you have to lead with something like that, that stands out that much, that is going to make other people kind of uncomfortable, you're a master of just being honest and being authentic. So, like, we are getting a real ass person out of her and i think that that's I, I i just that's why i love people with disabilities you we have so much to learn from them in terms of just like being who you are because you can't you don't have a choice to be anything else you can't hide that you gotta you gotta just admit it and be like I, it's not my fault i'm deaf and i'm fucking fabulous it's also we talk so much about or we have talked so much about representation on the show recently but also people with disabilities and certain ailments don't get probably the least amount of representation on the show people who are hearing impaired or i mean we've never had a blind person on the show or we don't have a lot of plus size people no. on the show no uh we had sarah heron uh who from sean Lowe's season you know she sarah was born without one arm you know oh, who was a right. fan favorite uh, on the franchise was on paradise but other than sarah we haven't had a lot of uh of people with any type of disabilities and so yes to have abigail odd i think is you know, she seems great, but also like Ugh. that's such a I mean, think of all the people in the deaf community who have like never been like, you know, we we fell in love with love on the spectrum, which obviously is very different, oh. different things. But in terms yes. of like, I want to I want to sit down with Abigail so much and just like 
what's we talk about dating on the show so much like what has been like i'm so interested in hearing abigail's st- story mm-hmm. also it, like is is abigail like our, our early front runner for bachelorette yes i mean if she doesn't win this for sure right she is so captivating she's so beautiful she's you can hardly even tell she's struck like her voice sounds not like we would recognize a deaf voice to sound, but I think it's because of the cochlear implant. You know what I want to see is when she, I love watching those videos of people that get the implant and they'll be just sitting there. Then all of a sudden they're like, oh, like, and, and then everyone cries. Those always get me. She probably has that video. What, what you know where the it? babies are deaf and they're just like, Oh yes. You know, so like, oh my God. Yes. In three, two. And the baby's like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And everyone cries and then you cry. And yeah. Oh, it's oh. up. It's up there with dad coming home from the military. Yes, yes. it's yes. so sweet. But she's. I. I just love her. And um. I. Yeah. You're right. I think we're gonna see a lot of her. And honestly, I wasn't thinking about when watching it, but I don't see how she's not your bachelorette if she if she doesn't win. No. Yeah. There's no way. I will say I was really impressed with Matt's reaction. Like, I mean, well, you can jump around because we all know she got the first impression rose. Mm-hmm. I. I loved how. Like, you know, again, knowing that Matt's never been on this show, right? So. It's such a weird we've talked so much on these recap shows of how weird it is night one to go into that world and be so out of it. So lost. So like deer in headlights. And granted, while Tyler is his best friend, and I'm sure Tyler talked to him a lot about the experience. And certainly the producer spent a lot. Tyler doesn't talk a lot. Sure. But the the producer spent a lot of time (laughs) with Matt. It was still very new for for Matt. And I thought I, I liked how he interacted with Abigail. Like I liked how. I was surprised that he went in. He just went and kissed her, you know, yes, because I would he think was like, he's very nervous and I could see him being nervous and he he comes across as kind of very reserved, you know, and so that seemed to be a surprise and I, I, I quite liked it. Oh, I, I thought it was so genuine and he was just so into her and oh, that was so hot. I loved that. He was a kissing machine though. He was kissing a lot. Well, and, um, I feel that, correct me if I'm wrong. I think, wasn't she, he, it felt like she he she was the only girl Abigail that Matt kissed and the rest of the girls kissed yeah. him and he yes, went with it exactly yeah and then uh, who else kind of pops out uh, at you uh, uh, Chelsea Ugh. the 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 runway model oh yeah uh, the best oh. part about her is like when she walks she doesn't look like she's walking she like has this professional gait where she's literally was gliding on the uh, what the red carpet I mean what a gorgeous yes. Yeah, the ballerina. I thought we were going to see a lot of her, and then she left. That was funny because they spent a lot of time with her previously, like building her whole story, and then she left. And I thought she, I was like, where, what, where's the plie on the way out? She just kind of shuffled yeah. out and she walked in, like, you know, on tippy toes. The ballerina. I was about to say, I was, uh, as soon as she started like dancing in her intro patch- package, I was like, nah. Really? Especially then she got a limo. I was like, nah. I, Oof. I would. What do you think? Ask, answer me this question: If Brie was also a world class ballerina, do you think Brie would uh, got a limo dancing? No. She would have held it. She would have held on to it. She'd That's been like, I don't need to lead point. with my best skill. But as soon as yeah. she came out dancing, I was like, no, that's. It's kind of weird. That's interesting. But the I loved it because in the in the package for her first package where they were talking to her and she was saying I'm a perfectionist that's why I love ballet I, everything has to be perfect and I was like I can't wait to see this girl get sent home and like get served a little bit of like reality like you can just tell she's just so perfect and to go home first I really felt for her in that like that's well, I mean as listen, someone I've... who got voted off Dancing with the Stars first it is really embarrassing to not even make it past the first episode oh. it's just one of the most humiliating feelings listen, ever I I feel for everyone who goes home night one I'm just saying yeah. I when I saw her dancing on a limo it was a it was a no for me yeah no it's try, it's too it's trying too hard it's trying too hard yeah it's just like uh, you know especially because what she's so Brian? good at it like she's so she's a world class ballerina like that's it's like a don't you're fl- it's like if you were a bodybuilder you get out of a limo you start flexing right away you know like it'd be like you know surprise me i want to wonder what's underneath that shirt type of stuff yeah. you know right it's like i will not get out of the limo with a mic stand 
against like a brick wall. Right? Would you start like, doing, oh, like, you're a comedian, you're in the bachelorette, and you're like, yeah, you don't come out and start giving me a mic and no. start telling jokes. You're just. And I don't do that like when I'm dating guys. I don't want to ever lead with what I'm really great at. I want to like them to get to know me for n- not the things I'm good at. Yeah. Because like I-, I got those in the bag. But let's see if you like the other stuff. Which is all the reasons why I was, it was a. Uh, I'm single. It was a no for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's a good point i think this goes back to these girls just trying too hard and it you just gotta be a, you gotta play it closer to the vest which is what did you think about vibrator girl uh i loved it at first i was like i'm i like it and then too much put it away we're done <laughs> That's not right. And she was just, much like the ballerina. She was just sewing something that she is very talented at. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, I, I like in the uh, vibrator to Alexis in the shark costume uh, on my oh. season. Oh yeah. Where, you that know, was you. <laughs> it's just like a good joke. And she, she, it, you know, she seems like she has a sense of humor. I, I liked some of her mm-hmm. jokes about like being willing to share it with whatever her roommate is and walk. You know, I'm fine with it. I thought yeah. it was fine. Listen, if it if the vibrator is showing up in episode two, then I'm you know, but I'm fine with it being a, a thing, a prop all night one. All night long. I mean, who knows? Who I knows was how long it was? Nauseated by how long it was going on. No, it was all night long. She tapped the girl on the shoulder with it. I was surprised that. I, when he presented um, Abigail with the rose, I thought he was going to give her that the vibrator. I, I was like, that thing is like showing up more than for than all anything else. for all we know. That was like the first two hours of the night. Then she's you're right. Down. You're right. This is a, that's a good point. But it was um, I did like it, and I did think like, oh, ABC, you're you're kind of like that's a little dirty, you know? Like I, well, I we're fucking in windmills. I mean, it's a vibrator. It's fine. Well, we're also praying before you know a, a cocktail party, so I, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. ABC, we're all over the place. I, I personally loved it, if for no other reason, uh, for the same reason we we tease about like ABC leaning into it's like heavily, you know, it's a show that's supposed to be talk about dating and love as a nation and and. There's there's not a lot of religious representation outside of Christianity, right? Uh, but like sex positive, I love it. Sex toys, you know, totally. women w- women and, and and sex toys sometimes feel like they are embarrassed to talk about a sex toy or use a sex toy, even if they're in relationships. I think it fucking's great on an ABC I, national I television to fucking whip out a dildo or whatever that shit was. Or no, uh, I love that too. You're it's exactly it's normalizing it, and I liked how she said. You know, I brought one of these and because I, I knew that I would need this and these other girls are going to be wanting one. I'm like, they all brought one, too. They just didn't pull it out of the, it didn't. That is them a, out of the limit. I honestly don't know the answer to this question. You would think you're right. You would think a lot of them have or a lot of them do. Right. And it's Chrissy, never been talked about. Would you bring a would you bring a toy if you knew possibly you would have your own room while at The Bachelor? Yes. Uh, no. no question. Or bring it in the shower yeah. or whatever. You know, like something like you you don't know when you're gonna get privacy, but you bring it just in case. Yes. yes don't leave home without it. Agreed. <laughs> I will say though. <laughs> I, it's like one of the ten items that should be required and do by not Survivor. Forget your charging cord. And don't forget the charging cord or uh, bring the one that's shaped like a lipstick. So <laughs> you can like you know what's throw a battery weird? in that real quick. You know what's weird oh though, God. is that now that I'm thinking about it, I remember you know, we all have seen the Seinfeld episode where Kramer's like, not every day. I went at least the first two weeks in the mansion. I didn't masturbate at all. And I remember like two weeks in being like, wait, I, when was the what? I haven't. Were you just too busy with the well, show? One, like- one is you don't have a lot of privacy, right? It's it's a uh, there's like 20 guys in a house. And uh, yeah, I mean, my <laughs> mind was just fucking fried. I can't and- get rid of this visual. <laughs> You know, so like I just remember being like, "Wow, I'll, I haven't." I'll take some of yours, Chrissy. I... <laughs> wait, what? Why? Wait a second. You didn't jerk off for two, but aren't you like horny as hell making out with these girls? Because you're not getting it in. Oh, I'm not talking while. about when I was a bachelor. I was talking about an Andy season. Oh, an Andy season when you were oh, okay. okay. Right. When I was a bachelor, I had all the <laughs> privacy in the world. No, that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's weird because in the house you're just like it's there's just everyone there's you have no fucking privacy. Oh my god, I would need I would feel like I would need to do it so that I wouldn't do desperate weird things like I'd need to like 
get it out of my system so I did I could keep my cool and stay like Brie. Brie was probably jerking off in that limo that she got out so cool. She didn't need him. <laughs> she did the what about Mary beforehand. She, 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 <laughs> she used that vibrator right before she got in the limo. Yeah. She knows what's up. But I will say I would love to see I will say well, I don't need uh what what is her name? It was it uh is Katie, right? I yeah. yeah, I don't want Katie to be holding the vibrator anymore and like making it a joke, but I think it would be kind of funny or even cool to have, you know, we have these women chats, these girl chats throughout the season. I think it would be like funny to talk about. Not even I funny. I would think it'd be cool to be like, fuck yeah, I have one. You know, like make it a thing, you know, yeah. normalize it. I think that'd normalize be fantastic. Normalize it. Yes. So And I like also I would bring one around in case I make it to the the honeymoons, the the those the suite. Because I like to incorporate it in, into normal sex. You don't need it just solo. I think it's great for... It makes uh, it better. Yeah. So I, I will say I loved I loved it that she brought it. I love that she brought it in the entrance. Uh, I think it sets a, a a nice message to Matt of like, you know, you know, guys, all guys should be okay with it. It's kind of a toxic masculine thing to not be okay with it. And I'm not... Uh, Matt, Matt handled it well. He laughed. He was cool about it. I think it was a great response. Um, but I, I thought said it was a prayer good. and then said he didn't he yeah. say after the prayer, like, I'm sorry, like the, I can't the focus. Bill don't like books, which is great. You know, funny. you can have both. He was great. That's when I was like, This is a great guy. When he laughed at the, the vibrator, yeah. thing. he had the best reaction. Um, who else? Who, who else do we like? The lingerie girl. Can we discuss the girl in the lingerie? Do we like that? Do we not? I don't, you don't like it? I don't care. I mean, I mean, we're yeah, that was good. awful. Oh, what, really? what what was awful about it? I was like, um, you've been sitting in quarantine for 14 days and this is the best you came up with. I, I thought think, that a lot of things. <laughs> I think the producer had that idea since like season eight and has just been pitching it over and over and no one has ever taken it. And he's like, I really just think this could be great. Yeah. And you're the girl to do it. And she's like, okay, I did bring two dresses. That and, red dress um, was fire though. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, I, I, think, I wish Matt would have gone. I think you should just keep wearing the robe. I think I think Nikki probably nailed it. Yeah, she was a willing participant. I'm not going to yeah. shame her for going for it. I mean, she wore some lingerie. She looked great. So, um, you know, she I, looked great. Yeah. I uh, I don't think she's going to go far. Uh, because of that? No, I don't think it has anything to do with it. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought Peter and Kelly would never break up, and here we are. You know, so <laughs> um, can't always get it right. Uh, b -b -b who else do we got? MJ. What do we think of M MJ? Was the girl MJ. who came out in the car with the pizza? Really liked. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't open the door. Couldn't open the door, but she handled <laughs> it well. She cute. didn't get frazzled because a lot of women on the show, I could see like losing their shit because the thing they had planned didn't work out because the door was locked. Uh, the show gets a lot of drama from expectations not meeting reality in, in, a, in, in silly situations and she handled it very well it was, it was poised it was super cute and she handed some pizza she's got great hair gosh she's got that jesse spano hair it takes me back uh, <laughs> it really does it's exactly jesse spano hair and it's um yeah i'm so excited and i just I can't hide it. it i'm so i'm so scared um no she's she's gonna be around too you saw you see that you see that hair a lot in the the preview for the season upcoming like you can always pick her out sometimes in those you know up on upcoming on the season you're like oh they all look the same but her i'm like oh she's sticking around for a bit and then we have uh maggie from uh ethiopia which mm -hmm. i mean stunning she's a pharmacist i couldn't she, she came to school for pharmacy and then she now resides currently in ethiopia it seemed like she's when she said i came here from Ethiopia for just for this it sounds mm -hmm. like she's currently residing in Ethiopia but right. she went to school here so that that wasn't totally clear but it's that sounds what she said which yeah I mean, I which can't again wait. like the can't coming wait for that hometown for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that might be uh yeah but the, the hometowns now they're bringing them to to the estate that's right I forget about that that's it's such a bummer but that is hilarious uh, but it does, but I mean, again, she's a, saying, she's very striking. Uh, oh my god, yeah! Stunningly beautiful. Uh, I and mean, just, I, I love the way she talks. She's, you know, just she, she has presence. Uh, I love we're getting international. I think that yeah, that I think it's we great. Um, who else? What do you think of Kit? What do you think of the twenty-one-year-old girl who came on the Bentley? Who mm -hmm. apparently, like, her mom is some 
like a, apparently very successful, famous d- designer. Okay. My understanding. Yeah. Like her mom, I think, is a big deal in some circles. Hit, I think, is going to be trouble. She has a, she she has some Cor- Korean vibes. Mm-hmm. Uh, She's very confident, young, and um, yeah, she was like, you can remember me because Kit, it's keep in touch. And I was like, oh, I, I was waiting for a girl to come out and be like, my name's Hags. Have a great summer. Just some other yearbook <laughs> uh, like acronym. <laughs> I, <laughs> my, my new social team uh, uh, is letting me know that uh, Cynthia Raleigh is Kit's mom. Do you know who Cynthia oh, Raleigh is? Oh, wow. Yeah, this bitch comes from money. Damn. Yeah. Um, okay. So just a quick update. From the, they, I think they think they're calling themselves the the social, uh, social squad or something. Um, mm-hmm. We're figuring it out. It's they had a cool name and I I'm butchering it. Oh, it's, they're texting me now. Syndicate, the social syndicate. Let me know oh, that it's like Cynthia. It. Cynthia Raleigh is her mom. Okay, I've never heard. Yeah. Do, is her mom's a big deal then. Yeah, yeah. That is that's a very well known fashion designer. Yeah, so that's her daughter. So. I, my only gripe Damn. with Kit is that she kept telling the same joke when she was what? like, I'm the, you know, when, when the queen came out and we haven't talked about the queen uh, and, and Kit was just like, I'm what I don't know. She said like, I'm the king the president. Yeah. The CEO. And, and she said that like in an ITM and then she said it to one of the girls. And if she said it, tw- if they aired it twice, I mean, she said it all fucking night. I there's know. nothing worse it's than like so having one bad. joke and telling it over and over and over. And it wasn't even good. And it the wasn't first even that funny. It was like confusing. The fr- like it didn't even make sense. And then the second time I was like, oh, I see the joke she's trying to make and it's just not or it's not good. To that, but, but um, other than that, yeah. I did quite. I think uh, she does remind me have some Corinne. Um, She'll be around vibes. for a while. Uh, I, listen, she's 21. I mean, get I get that she is, you know, her mom is a famous person, but she. She is coming in with clearly she, you know, from New York, you know, she's if her mom is like this well to do person, she's pr- clearly like running like certain circles that most people don't have an opportunity to run in. And there's a level of life experience that most people her age probably yeah. don't have. And she comes in guns a blazing. And I think it's great. Um, and um, yeah, I, I hope I hope that she. Uh, is around for a while and uh, I hope Matt likes her because I could see I could see her pissing off a lot of the women and not giving a shit in a, yes. in the best possible way like I don't mm. think she'll be like a villain I think she'll be yeah I think if she goes far she'll be well like a Corinne Corinne wasn't really a villain it was like she'll piss off how a lot of the girls in the house she won't care and a lot of people in the audience will love her for it yeah is my hope for her, uh, but we'll uh, we will see. Kristen, the uh, attorney from Virginia Beach, um, hmm. I like her. She, I don't remember anything very specific about her, other than I no, saw something. He was on, the one that was like, "The verdict is you're hot." Yeah, but there is something. I saw something on uh, in the, on Instagram over the weekend about like some girl talked about how like she was in New York and like helped her out in a weird dating situation and. Um, but she seemed to have great presence. I don't know. Oh, what do you think of Mari? Mari the Um, yeah. She's got villain vibes. Definite villain. Well, yeah, she's got the Kardashian face and um the lips and uh, I mean this show there's so much lip filler on this show. I think we have three women who have their original lips. Um <laughs> and it's just it's it's too much. Is it's, Abigail it's, one of them? Um, Abigail actually does have her original lips and <laughs> I love how you say values, this with like confidence. Yeah, I can see them. She, she definitely does. Cause she values mouths because she has to read them. And so she knows that she point, can't be yeah. fucking with her mouth. And, um, she's going to be ha- having a hard time deciphering what Mari says because, um, <laughs> it, there's no, there's no longer any like actual movement of uh, the lip. That would be my uh, dream for Mari to be talking and Abigail on episode three being like, like, I can't understand. You have too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Mari seems nice, though. I, I mean, I've had filler in my lips, too, so I'm not I really am not hating. So um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of that going on in the show. And it's just a shame because she's 24. It's like you guys don't need to do this stuff yet. Come on now. Oh, she's 24. Yeah, I would not have guessed. Yeah, that. you don't think she is because people who get this stuff done look like women who are in their 30s, who is with the age that you should get it done yeah 
Um, and then we have, uh, is it Anna or Anna? The coffee mm-hmm. drinker who's all like hopped up on. Oh, yeah, that girl. She's a lot of energy. I, I liked her. <laughs> I mean, uh, God bless her. Uh, her. The whole monologue during the rose ceremony where she's talking about. She was like, I had no time to talk to him. So I'm trying to talk to him with my eyes. And then they show her literally doing it. And it, I'm just like, how How do you not think that <laughs> is nuts? <laughs> Like, but they showed it like in, it was, it was so, I mean, I earnest. I get, what did she do? Like, can you show me? Like, was she just like, she, yeah, no, li- exactly. They, she was in her like ITMs talking about what she was doing. And, and she was like, I didn't get to talk to him. So I'm trying to communicate to him like visually that I want to talk to him. And she was right. literally doing what you're, you spent the past 15 minutes doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, oh God, how do you, why would you think that would work? And, I mean, um, I guess because like you, you, you're just, you, she's out of options. I mean, she ran out of time. She didn't get any more alone yeah. time with him. She's got to communicate something. And you think maybe as a stare, like a, a fuck me stare might do it. But, um, it just comes off looking psychotic, especially when you have too much caffeine and you're like not blinking. Who uh, else? Oh, can we get to the queen? Yes. Oh the queen. Yeah. Let's talk about, Please. uh, Victoria. Who is this woman? Are you kidding me? She is nuts and like not in a good way. I'm so sick of these people who think they are like God's gift to the earth. And they are, she's like, I I would not be surprised if she was on my super sweet 16 and still obsessed. Like she's just as big of a brat as those girls all were. I do not like the queen. Anyone who calls himself the queen. I literally had to rewind it and go, what is she? Is she actually a queen? Because who would ever refer to themselves as a queen and walk around with a fucking tiara on and then also try to get him alone twice? Fuck you. <laughs> Bye. I cannot believe she's still in the, the show. It's the producers. I, I threw down my notebook that I was taking notes with when she got a rose. I said, fuck this show. It's, it, I'm tired of it. He, so good girls had to go home because that bitch is going to stay around and cause drama and I'm here for it. But I'm okay. annoyed that there's no way Matt likes that girl. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but yeah, like let's let's have a little like silliness in the first two or three episodes, Nikki. This this I like girls to be confident, but this like I'm better than everyone else strutting around. It's so gross, and it, I I hope no one watches that and goes, oh, that's cool. It's just it's it's really I I, I doubt anyone is. You were not as naughty, nauseated by her. I, is, I, I guess maybe I, I see myself in her or something. I, I don't know what's going on. Am I projecting? I, <laughs> is the, is the, is the, I mean, um, listen, I, I, I just, I didn't take her any more serious than I figure she takes herself. Oh, she takes herself very you think seriously. So? Yes. 100%. Ugh, I can't believe this woman has friends, has like a family. She's one of these girls that was just raised like a little princess. Daddy. But she also kind of had Corinne vibes in that way. Right. Like Kit and mm. Kit and the princess made Corinne. Yes. No? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I guess I get that. Kit and the queen. Like, yeah. With the like on the nanny shops and the whole thing. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Uh, I, I oh. Yeah. I mean, I could pick. I had the producers oh. gave Corinne a suggestion of like, would you be down for a whole like be ca- ca- carried in uh, on uh, a, a throne? I, I doubt Corinne would have said no. <laughs> I just don't understand some being so loathsome and having no concept that you are such. Well, maybe she's. Uh, I, I well, I was shocked you have such a strong opinion on Victoria. Oh, I'm surprised. I, I was like, I was so mad. Hold on, you saw her right before she got the last rose, and she looked like she was going to lose her shit. I think Queen Elizabeth would have a better chance of winning the show than. Um... This queen. Well, I don't think Victoria is going to win. No, I think she. No. I would be if she's there past week four. I'll be shocked. Yeah, we haven't I, talked I about Sarah. Oh yeah, the the reporter. It was the first girl that Matt talked to. She does. She's very quiet, and I only bring her up. And I will say, I I don't remember what do we remember what our limo exit was? Did they show that? Because they really ran through a lot of the limo. I think she came out pretty Exits. normally. Who was it? Sarah. The the news reporter. Oh, yeah, what, yeah the news reporter. There were two the news. Re- there were two journalists. Okay. She Sarah have... was the one that was originally from Palm Springs. It's like now in San Diego. And then there was one from Chicago. 
Well, yeah, the San Diego Sarah. Broadcast journalist from San Diego Sarah. She was the first one to talk to Matt. Uh, she seemed like she had a really good conversation, and, and she seemed yeah. really poised. Yeah. I, I, you know, I wa- when I watched oh, this. Oh, she's a caregiver for her dad, remember, oh, with yes. ALS? Was that her? Oh, that's her. Um, they had the whole package in the beginning. Well, in the yeah. in the super tease, they they you know you can't go too much by the super tease, but they show her having a what seems to be a very serious conversation with Matt, and Matt saying, "I mean, it's clearly Sarah." Um, so that just tells me that she's probably going to be here for a while. Uh, but she mm. she didn't stand out as much as like Abigail or um, Rachel or. Um, or Brie for me, but it seems like Matt really loves. She'll be around. Yeah. Seems like she she, she, she has a Denise Richards vibe. She does. She has a very she has a very Denise Richards vibe. Good good call. Uh, oh, you know who Rachel reminds me of? Who? Um, I know Ben Affleck's girlfriend. I see that a little bit too, but not as much as um, it, uh, Mila Kunis. Yes, thank you, Mila Kunis. Yeah. Oh my god, totally. she. Like there were, I was like, who does she remind me of? And she doesn't look just like Mila Kunis, but in a certain angles when she was talking, and she kind of has a raspy Mila Kunis voice. Mm-hmm. She definitely has Mila Kunis vibes, which I think is probably great for her. I uh, mean, everyone on the show is so stunning, and it's it's it really like. Do you ever just watch and you're like, I'm so old. <laughs> I haven't yet, no, but that's just me. Really? Yeah. Oh, cause all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Maybe because I'm a woman. And Nikki, it's you look like, great. Oh. Well, I know, but you're as hot uh, as ever. Just, thank you, but th- I'm just saying. Honest like, question: Do you think you're hotter now or when you were 23? Definitely now. But I don't know what you look like at 23, but yeah, are gonna yeah. get hotter. Uh, not everyone me. ages great. No, that's true. That's yeah, true. It's uh, you know, people all have all different sorts of paths. We haven't really talked much about. Uh, oh, there's two Ser- Serena's, right? Serena C and Serena P. Yeah. Uh, and then Serena C, she went home, right? No. She did not? No. She was a, she got to like the last rose. And one, close to last. She was freaking out as well. Mm. But Serena yeah. P, the publicist from Toronto, she's the one who got on the footstool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was cute. Yeah. I think she'll... I felt like the super tease we saw on her horse, which is probably a good sign for her. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably a good <laughs> I saw her on a horse. Right? I don't she know. Got this. I mean, if you're on a horse, that's usually like it's definitely one on one. There's a date somewhere. It's a one on one, and you know, it's a good chance it might be later in the season. A horse takes a lot of, you know, takes a lot of the day. You could talk on a horse. Who else? Every Marilyn, Marilyn, who uh, who uh, who I was thinking about, got the Marilyn. close to the last rose. Yeah, she was the one. She was, was kind of fr- she, her and her. Oh and, yeah, she came out of nowhere. I was like, where's her this and Anna? Going? Were the ones who were freaking out about not having a chance to talk to Matt. Yes. And then Amber as well um, did not have a chance to talk to him. And that's when I thought the queen was going to go get him for Amber. She's like, you just got to get in there. Amber's the oldest of the bunch. She's 30. Is that our oldest person? 30? It looks to be. Uh, I thought yeah. there was somebody that no, was No, like and she 32. got sent home. Didn't Amber get sent home? I don't know if she got sent home because I it was like tracking it on the thing. Maggie is to 32. I think she's oh. the oldest, by the way. Um, but I can't oh, I couldn't figure out for the life of me if Amber went home. I swear I watched it like three times. Wow. No, it was it was uh, the both the limo, both the, en- the entrances and the rose ceremony. I think, you know, because, like I said, they had to spend so much time on Matt. Right. Yeah. Because we didn't we don't know Matt is that they kind of had to cram in the rest. Because yeah. there were they didn't spend a lot of time on the limo entrances. Like we got to see five or six good ones, right? And the rest mm-hmm. were just like five Quickies. or six, like little quick, little quick Has beats. Has it happened in the past where girls that weren't really focused on in the first episode make it far? I mean, they've gotten the sh- the season has to be wrapped up by now. They know where this. Well, is the headed, season's so. definitely wrapped up, but uh, mm. yeah, I mean, listen, it's not a good sign if you get no airtime night one. But it like who who I mean you know obviously Abigail got a lot of airtime Rachel got a lot of airtime I think we both agree that we wouldn't be shocked if they're top four yeah. uh, both of them I mean I don't know I don't know how that Piper girl too that he liked Piper did he like the Piper one who, that was the one with the same last name already I, what did she I forgot I forget oh, about yes, her yes I love that I yeah I totally she was like my yeah. way. 
I want to meet a guy with the same last because I want to keep my last name. Or I was looking Piper's for last a guy name is James. Has, yeah. yeah. Great. Isn't that fun? Yeah. It's a great last name. I, I either want. I don't remember her. Same last name or someone with a name that I can hyphenate it and it will sound cool, like Glazer Beam or um. Glazer Beam. Glazer, Glazer Pointer. No. So I really Please. didn't look up no. guys with the last name Pointer and Beam. No. To, procreate with so our kids would have cool last names glazer, glazer surgery well that, that no one's less in the surgery but i don't know <laughs> but i think it would be awesome oh to find a guy with your last name i would let i would just like so that's why i'm d- currently dating one of my cousins <laughs> oh my god just kidding i would never he's poor he's um poor. but <laughs> but i did think that was cool and i think that's a good sign that uh that she might stick around. Piper, yeah, I for, I forgot. I don't remember. I mean, there was a lot going on night one. There was a lot going on. What do you think about the super tease, Nick? In to be honest, the, I thought the, the super tease coming up. I thought the super tease was probably one of the least traumatic super teases I've seen. Agreed. But I mean, we do we do. Uh, never been kissed shows up. The girl who was on Colton season who had literally never been kissed. She. Uh, blonde yeah she's like she hangs around with hannah brown all the time she's like yes. hannah brown's sidekick that's where i recognized her and and obviously we know that hannah and tyler are friends and matt is friends with hannah so i think there's uh, probably so there's a connection there so i i wouldn't be shocked if Han- never been kissed as she's met matt right because even in the super tease they made they kind of reference like she's there for a reason, and the reason is I know Matt James, not just like I've seen you like on Instagram, there are just and I no think you're rules hot. On this show anymore, it's just like anyone can just show up and get yeah. on in and come back, and like it's just it's a free for all, and I, I I love it. The social syndicate is reminding me that her name is Heather. I knew it was Heather, but I uh, I will always refer to her as never been kissed. Never been N- NBK. I I don't see how she sticks around all that much. But she's never been kissed. I don't. You know. I would be. Uh, would that be funny if someone was like, "I've never been gone down on," and then everyone <laughs> called through that? Could you imagine? <laughs> I've never had anal, and she just is known for that. And people are like, "I haven't either," but it's not like my calling card. Can you it's imagine? Still better than the queen. Could you imagine if a girl on our one on one date, you know, like everyone has their story, and she's like, "Can I be honest with you? I've just never had oral sex performed on me." <laughs> that would be hot. Because yeah. it'd be like, let's let's do this. I feel like it would be a. Well, we've had. I'm a virgin. We've had. I've never been kissed. I mean, eventually, and we got. I'm we sure got, we've had one. We have that hasn't dildos. Been gone down on. We have dildos showing up. <laughs> oh my my. Um. <laughs> just you know, for any producers listening, if you have a if you're looking for a new storyline, um. That would be what so. About? Yeah, I don't. So they, yeah, and then we, so to your so more of the super tease. We have uh, other like they obviously are taking this page out of you know what they did um, on Tasha's season, right? Now they did that because you know I love you know it's kind of like how they you know they're working with what they have, right? So they they had Tasha replace Claire, and when Tasha replaced Claire, they probably had these conversations like, do we bring guys late? I mean, it sounds like Noah was there the whole time after talking to Noah. So who knows? Maybe they had that plan. Maybe maybe Noah and 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 Spencer and those guys who showed up late for Tasha were always going to show up late for Clara. But obviously things changed. So they're doing this this again. I think it's great. I mean, if you thought the guys handled uh, Noah and Spencer uh, showing up late poorly. We already see how poorly oh, these, yeah. these girls were like, fuck you. Like you they weren't were here from the beginning. Girls yeah, they, they were like, it was uh, it was wild. So um, I love the late additions. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. It's uh, a great move. I can't believe they, they got to that. They didn't do that sooner. It's so fun. I think they pu- pulled it probably from Bachelor in Paradise. They saw how much fun it was to just throw new people in the mix. Yeah, but they're also probably just doing it because, well, they're not traveling. And it's just a new wrinkle and they can. Because before it's hard to like bring someone in in like Hong Kong. Hey, you want to get on a plane up. and find? Wait, a... you showed up once in New York. Yeah. 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 Okay, you were the first. No, I wasn't the first. I was the first one to stick around. Do you ever just watch this show, Nick, and go, "I can't believe I did this show"? I was actually thought I was about watching that last night for you, and I was like, "I can't believe Nick did this show." 
Yeah, no, when I was watching Matt, I was like, wow, this is, yeah. No, every time I watch it, I always get a little anxiety. Yeah. But, like, I, I mean, it's just such a, a monumental thing to be a part of and, and just all the attention and, like, the, the pressure. And then to have it just be over and to be thrust back in the world. I mean, it's just, it must be just so insane. It's nuts. But such a cool experience. Yeah. I don't know. I just was like, I think I think it's crazy you've been through that. A well, <laughs> Nikki, I feel like we've summed it up. <laughs> yeah. The, the show. Um yeah, uh, I think we. Yeah, I don't. We we don't really. Ha- we guess we kind of given our predictions for what we we uh, we think. Uh, Brie, Abigail, and Rachel are yeah. probably top four. And um, yeah, will, will we have late additions? So that's I th- that's as much as I'm willing to say at this point in terms of predictions. So I'm excited to see what happens. I thought Matt came across really well this episode, and uh, uh, interested to learn more. I can't wait to. Learn more about all these walls he has up and how he's going to be able yeah, to break it down. I'm interested in these walls that are suddenly ready to come down. It takes a lot of work to like finally let those down, and just isn't it? Just seems like kind of a rash decision to be like ready to do it. So we'll see if he's actually ready. I think well, it's a great example for men. When you when you go on The Bachelor, you you tend to um, you know try your hardest to bring down those walls. You know so. What are you gonna do, Nikki? I uh, always appreciate love when you come on. Um, let love people know on. where you can uh, they can find you. Uh, all the, um, all the comedy pod- you're delivering. Oh, thank you. I um I um have a podcast coming out in March at some point. Um, so look for that. But you can follow me on Instagram, and uh, I'd really appreciate the follow. And I try to be funny and put out good stuff on there. And I, I appreciate you having me. This is always so much fun. Uh, we love having you on. You can always uh, obviously Ch- N- Nikki's usually on uh, some ABC game or whatever, hosting Jimmy mm-hmm. Kimmel. You know, also. Yeah. That's... Oh, yeah. I'm on the history of swear words that's coming out on Netflix on the. You 5th. are. God. Yeah, I'm in like a couple episodes of that. Nick Is it just like because I'm not a stand uh, like a superstar can't stand up comedian like yourself that I can't get on the history of swear words? God. Like I gross. don't know why they asked me. I think they asked me because I'm like a dirty stand up, you know, and I. Uh-huh. So I think that that's why. And yeah, also I'm, you just like pass over the fact that like you said Nicholas Cage was the yeah. host, which like, is like yeah, Nicholas Cage is the host. It's so weird. I didn't get to meet him or anything. You so didn't. Weird. Yeah. He's so uh, weird. So weird, and he takes the job very seriously. And it it was a fun show to do. I'm excited to see how it turned out. So that'll be on Netflix on on the fifth, and we cover bitch, dick, pussy, uh, fuck, and damn. Okay. Well. Can't wait to watch that. I actually thought it was already out, and I looked for it, but I didn't, oh, even, no. I didn't even know you were on it. Coming out the fifth. Uh, we'll be sure to check that out. Uh, always love having you on. I'm sure we'll have you back, Nikki. Uh, thanks, hopefully Nick. in studio next time if you're uh, able to oh, make I a tell. Oh, so. Well, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, as always, please subscribe. Rate us five stars. Be sure to check out our, our social channels. Follow us on Instagram at Vile Files, and uh, obviously if you watch it on YouTube, you can sc- subscribe to that. We'll be doing fun and new things on uh, our social channels that I hope that you won't want to miss, including uh, me ranking uh, the top 10 women of each week. It's something new we're going to do. It's like our power rankings every week on our social. We'll be dropping the top 10 women from each episode. That's based off of uh, how I feel about uh, the women of that week. Not necessarily predictions on how far they're going to go, but just uh, how they're it might include that, but uh, just the top 10. Uh, every week uh wednesday we have ali webb uh our guest it's an awesome episode we talk a lot about uh second chances uh marriage and divorce uh women in the workplace uh ali if for those of you don't know is uh, sometimes a shark on shark tank she is the founder of uh, dry bar and um doing a lot of client of ben's she is a client of, of ben uh, ben, uh, Tasha's. Well, not Tasha's. It's not Tasha's Ben anymore. No, Ben's Ben. Ben's Ben. He's he's his own Ben's man ben. now. But uh, Ben is her fitness coach. Yeah. Um. So we talk a little bit about that. That's it on Wednesday. Uh. Also, if you've never listened to our Ask Nick uh, episodes that we drop on Mondays, be sure to uh, keep listening, and we're uh, gonna give you a little preview. That's uh, every Monday. Those episodes drop. So if you've never listened, that. And here is a preview. What's your time with Nick? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. Hi, Catherine. Welcome back. 
Hi. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, do us a favor. Let us know why you called in the first place and uh, remind the audience uh, what was going on, what I said. If it was in any way helpful, uh, I'm anxious to hear. Yes. So I called um, in like mid-June um, because I was in a really <laughs> weird dynamic of a relationship. Um, we had just started this like thruple kind of relationship and I wasn't oh, yeah. really happy about it. And then um, you kind of told me, like, first, like, if I'm not happy and no one's listening to me, then it's not my fault that no one's listening. Um, and you also used a metaphor of it was like putting an infected bandaid on a wound. Oh, I remember that um, <laughs> And how it would just continue to, like, hurt me and, like, cause more pain. Um, and for the first couple months after, I, like, didn't take a word of what you said for what it was. I was like, no, I know my life more than he does. Like, what does he know? Um, and then like the end of September, I was like, okay, I am really unhappy. I went back and I listened to the episode that we did together. Um, and I was like, okay, but what if Nick is right? Um, and at the end of September, I ended this relationship and I decided I was like, gonna a hundred percent just embrace me and like give 110 percent to make myself better awesome and um so i decided like everything in my life was going to change i was going to give like i was going to eat right exercise i was going to give college 110 percent and give work 110 percent and i've lost like 30 pounds and i'm a straight a student in college right now and i'm thriving at work and i've literally never been happier it's amazing Great. I'm like crying. <laughs> I'm like so happy for her. Wow. <laughs> See what happens when we take off that infected band aid? Yeah. And I like can thank it all to you. And you just gave me like great advice that. Well, I, I think you moment. should. I think you should pat yourself on the back too, because it, it took. Yeah took a, a lot of work and, and, and that dedication to give the hundred percent and your in school and, and yourself. And, and if it was, you know, your eating goals and, and helping you accomplish that, um, it's, it's good that you took advice and it's good that you, and I, you know, but it, it's the work still comes from you and you were able to do that. So don't forget to pat yourself on the back and to give yourself some credit as well. Uh, because it's it's not just because of me. It's more, way more because of you. I was just a, a, a slight little spark, but you, you, you were the one who did the work. So don't forget that. And and if it ever like you know, a period in your life gets down and you lose a little bit of motivation, just remember you were capable of doing the work then. You know, you were, you can do yeah. it on your own. So don't. I think it's really important to give yourself a lot of credit for all the progress you've made. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm so yeah. glad that you're doing great and uh, you feel great and you're you're looking great and you uh, have a lot of confidence and and just remember that because it ebbs and flows of life. You know, uh, someday you're gonna run into someone who, you know, we we life is full of uh, ins and outs of people. We're we're gonna always meet toxic people and we're always gonna meet great people and we just have to try to manage our way through that that landmine and uh so just remember that next time because it will happen it's, it's it happens to all us all you know all right all right well happy holidays uh really appreciate you calling and a very inspirational and uh I'm really proud of you yeah thank you so much all right take care